Okay, so today we are going to start texturing the kitchen. We are going to do three things today. We are going to do the floor, we are going to do the walls, and we are going to do the tile section here on the reference. First things first, you must get a wood texture, preferably something that is seamless, so you can tile it upon each other. I got this one here, and I'm going to bring it into a normal shader. So you bring in the image texture, you control T the image, uh, so that you can UV unwrap the floor. You can make the texture proper, so you can um, unwrap it properly and make it not so that it's stretched or whatever. And then in front of the wood texture, you put a color ramp and you bring the white just a little bit closer and plug that color ramp into a mix RGB. This is going to serve as our base color for our wood floor. Uh, so look at the reference here and you see some, some of them are light orange and some is dark orange. So then on the mix RGB, you, you plug the color ramp into the factor and then you change one of the colors to the bright orange and one of the colors to the dark orange or the more saturated orange. Um, this is so that uh, the wood texture, uh, it takes the texture from the, from the wood image and it displays the colors uh, throughout the wood texture. As you can see now, we're getting this nice uh, orange-ish wood, you know. In front of this um, simple notary, you bring in a hue and saturation node and a brightness and contrast node and plug that into a mix RGB. Uh, th these two nodes are just so that you can manipulate the brightness and the color of the image. You tweak it as much as you want. I tweaked it just a little bit, added more contrast and a little bit more value on the hue and saturation node. Uh, not a lot, just a little bit. So I plug that into a mix RGB. That mix RGB you should set it to multiply because we are going to add a gradient node to add some more shadow of the room uh, in onto the floor. Because as you can see, not the whole floor is bright. So on the shadowy part of the room, we are going to bring in a gradient node, plug it into the bottom part of the mi uh, multiply mix RGB and plug in a color ramp and control T the gradient node. Uh, control T it so that you can just, if you need to, you just you can just rotate the linear lines a bit. But what we are going to do is we are going to make the center of the room have a bit more brightness and the sides where the cupboards and the table are, we are going to add some more shadow. So we are going to bring the white slider here in the middle and bring a black and we are going to bring a black on both ends so that there's a nice uh, shadow on both ends of the room. But then on the spot where the light uh, is coming through the doorway, we are going to bring that... Um, that light from the gradient there. So just tweak that a bit until you get this nice white line coming through the doorway. By the way, if you want to be able to view the nodes, you just press Control Shift and click a node, uh, any node you want to view. Control Shift and click any node you want to view, and then it should be viewing that node. Um, you will only be able to do this if you have the node angular add-on setup. Uh, you just need to go to Edit Preferences and type in node angular by add-ons, and then you can just click on the checkbox. It comes automatically with Blender, so you don't need to um, set up anything. All right, so after we've done that simple node team, we plug that into a brick texture. So we bring in a brick texture, we plug in this multiply mix RGB into both the color sockets of the brick texture. Just This is so that we have this nice um, planks, you know, for the floor. We don't want it just one flat uh, wood texture, we want it planks. That's how the floor is in the kitchen. So we bring that in, and we set the mortar size to smaller than how it is normally because we don't want it thick, we want it very thin and slight, you know. And then we control T the brick texture so that we can just control it just a bit more. Uh, tweak it to however you like. I like the I like the planks to be a bit bigger and wide, like the reference here. And then we plug that into another U and saturation node. This is also just to have more control over the colors of the floor because now when we tweak this one, we can change the value of the texture and the brick texture itself, you know, all this mortar. This principal BSDF, we're not going to change it a lot. We're just going to maybe make less roughness so that the light can reflect a bit more and shine a bit more and make it a bit metallic so that I can have a little bit more shine. But that is basically it now for our wood texture. 
you can you can obviously tweak it and change whatever parts you like and that is our floor for the kitchen it's nice and simple but now when you see when you shine some light on it it's nice and bright but the shadows are also dark all right and now we are going to move on to the tiles the tiles are a very simple texture but there's a small technique that once you do it you can make these cool highlights like you see in the reference here you can make those just with the textures you don't need to extrude anything so what we are going to do is we are going to assign a texture to the parts you want the tiles on uh, this part here and you are going to bring in a brick texture and plug it into the basic bsdf uh, this brick texture you're going to set the scale a bit big because you don't want big tiles you want small tiles so you make it maybe 20 i did here make the mortar size a bit smaller also and you control t the big texture this is so that we can change the rotation of the tiles so i'm going to rotate it on the y-axis maybe 45 just so that i can have square and i'm also going to set it to no offset there's going to be no offset it's all going to be straight just like the tiles here but for the colors i'm going to change it just a bit i'm going to make the top color just a bit blue and the bottom color just a bit gray uh, but i'm going to leave the mortar color black because you want that separation you know and then we are going to plug that into a hue and saturation node this is just so we can control the brightness again so we bring the value just a bit up and the saturation maybe just a bit plug that into the bsdf you're going to also set this um, principal bsdf to a bit uh, less rough so maybe uh, maybe 140 0.140 percent no just a bit lower and a little bit more metallic so that i can reflect light you know and it's pretty flat now as you can see it's, it's pretty flat but there's one thing we can do to make it not flat there's one thing we can do to make it bumpy and that it can reflect light and that is you plug the brick texture into a bump node this bump node you must plug the brick texture into the height of the bump node and set the strength to full so like to a full unit and plug that into the normal uh, of the bsdf this is going to make some bumps on your texture and now you can add your own spotlights so what i did i added some point lights i made the radius of the point lights very small and placed them around where the light would hit the tiles and there we go we get these nice highlights on the tiles and it makes it look and it makes it look a bit more authentic i like it a lot and that is our tile texture it's simple but it gets the job done like the reference now you see highlights in the reference on our tiles and there's brightness here bus so we mash it a bit And the last one we are going to do is the wall texture. The wall texture is also pretty simple. It's basically another image. You can either choose an image texture of gravel or paint or something or brick maybe. Whatever one you choose, you just, just get the texture, bring it into the shader of the wall and control T that texture so that you can unwrap it again. So then it's not squiggly or squashed or whatever. It's nice and well proportioned. Now you plug that into a mix RGB because we are going to change the color of the wall. Uh, set this mix RGB to color and as you can see in the reference there is a bit of color variation so it is going from darkish blue to lightish blue so what I did is I added a gradient to the bottom input of the mix RGB color and I added a color ramp between that gradient and I control T'd the gradient and once I did that I rotated it 90 degrees on the Y axis just so that I can, it can get from bottom to top the gradient you know not from sideways and then I changed the color to blue so I made the dark part of the color uh, a bit more saturated blue than the lighter part which will be a bit lighter blue that no group will be plugged into a mix RGB that I also plug the gradient node in as well because what the first mix RGB is doing is that it's changing the color of the paint but it's not removing the paint texture 
what this next node is doing is that it's kind of removing a lot of the image texture and adding just blue so it's not going to be a perfect image it's going to be basically it's going to be a plain color with a little bit of influence from the image itself so you don't get like a realistic look you get more of a, a, a stroke look you know and then i plug that into an emission you can either do this with an emission or you can do it with a hue and saturation node like i did last time with the value uh, that is actually just a little bit better because when you bring up the value it doesn't doesn't brighten up the shadows as much as the emission does but i use an emission here because the wall is always in shadow most of the time you don't need to focus on the light of the wall too much you need to focus on the shadow of the wall another thing i did before finishing this off i added another area light to add more light to the room so as you can see in the render is a bit more bright than in the in the render here so i just added another area light face it through the door uh, made it a bit bright, made it big, and lit up the room a bit. And inside, I also added a slight light, just so that everything can be a bit more lit up. That is our wall now. So we have our wall, we have our tiles, and we have our floor. You can obviously tweak it to however you like, but I think this is it for me now. You don't want to focus too much on these things because you're going to have to shade and texture all the others. Uh, spend as little time as you can uh, so that you can give enough time to the others. Well, that is it for now. I meet you in the next one. It's going to basically be about the cupboards, the door, and the table. Alright, boy.